to to ask you about another piece of technology, AI, that has the potential to have a, um, various trajectories uh, to have an impact on human civilization. How, how do you think AI will change us? We're, you're talking about you know generative AI, large language models, things like ChatGPT, and it's soon successors and um these are incredibly powerful technologies to believe otherwise is to bury your head in the sand soon to be even more powerful um it, it, it's interesting to me that, that that large language models in their current form are not inventions, they're discoveries. You know, the telescope was an invention, but looking through it at Jupiter, knowing that it had moons was a discovery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, my God, it has moons. And that's what Galileo did. And so this is closer on that spectrum of invention. You know, we know exactly what happens with a 787, it's an engineered object. We designed it, we know how it behaves. We don't want any surprises. Um, large language models are much more like discoveries. We're constantly getting surprised by their capabilities. They're not really engineered objects. Um, then you, know, you have this debate about whether they're gonna be good for humanity or bad for humanity. Um, you know, even specialized AI can be very bad for humanity. I mean, I, it's just, you know, just regular machine learning models that can, can make, you know, certain weapons of war that could be incredibly destructive and very powerful. And they're not general AIs, they're just, they could just be very smart weapons. Um, and so we have to think about all of those things. I'm very optimistic about this. So I, even in the face of all this uncertainty, my own view is that, that these powerful tools are much more likely to help us and save us even than they are to, on balance, hurt us and destroy us. I think, you know, we humans have a lot of ways of, um, we can make ourselves go extinct. You know, <laughs> these things may help us not do that, you know? So we may actually, they may actually save us. So the people who are, you know, overly concerned, I, I mean, in my view, overly concerned, it's a, it's a valid debate. Um, I, I think that I, I think that they may be missing part of the equation, which is how helpful they could be in making sure we don't destroy ourselves. Um, I don't know if you saw the movie Oppenheimer, mm -hmm. but to me, I, I, first of all, I loved the movie and I thought the, best part of the movie is this bureaucrat played by Robert Downey Jr. who, you know, some of the people I've talked to think that's the most boring part of the movie. I thought it was the most fascinating because what's going on here is you realize we have invented these awesome, destructive, powerful technologies called nuclear weapons and they are managed and, you know, we, we, we humans are, we're not really capable of wielding those weapons. Yeah. We're, you know, that's what he represented in that movie is here's this guy who is uh, just, he wrongly thinks he's like being so petty. He thinks that he said something, that Oppenheimer said something bad to Einstein about him. He, they didn't talk about him at all, as you find out in the final scene of the movie. And yet he spent his career trying to, be vengeful and uh and, and petty and that's that's the problem we as a species are not really sophisticated enough and mature enough to handle these technologies and so and and by the way before you get to general ai and the possibility of ai having agency and there's a lot of things that would have to happen but um there's so much benefit that's going to come from these technologies in the meantime, even before they're, you know, general AI in terms of better medicines and uh, better tools to develop more technologies and so on. So 
I think it's an incredible moment to be alive and to witness the transformations that are going to happen. How quickly it will happen, no one knows. But over the next 10 years and 20 years, I think we're going to see really remarkable advances. And I personally am very excited about it. First of all, really interesting to say that it's discoveries that uh, it's true that we don't know the limits of what's possible uh, with the current language models. We don't. And like, it could be a few tricks and hacks here and there that that uh, open doors to hold entire new possibilities. We do know that humans are doing something different um, from these models, in part because you know we're so power efficient. You know, the human brain does remarkable things, and it does it on about twenty watts of power, <laughs> and you know uh, the. The AI techniques we use today use many kilowatts of power to do equivalent tasks. So there's something interesting about the way the human brain does this. And also, we don't need as much data. So, you know, like self-driving cars, are they have to drive billions and billions of miles to try and to learn how to drive. And, you know, your average 16-year-old uh, figures it out <laughs> with many fewer miles. So there are still some tricks I think that we have yet to learn. I don't yeah. think we've learned the last trick. I don't think it's just a question of scaling things up. Um, but what's interesting is that just scaling things up, and I mm -hmm. put just in quotes mm -hmm. because it's actually hard to scale things up, but just scaling things up also appears to pay huge dividends. Yeah, and, and it's a, there's some more nuanced aspect about human beings that's interesting if it's able to accomplish, like being truly original and novel to, you know, large language models being able to come up with some truly new ideas. Uh, that's one. And the other one is uh, truth. Uh, it seems that large language models are very good at sounding like they're saying a true thing, but they don't uh, require or often have a grounding in sort of a mathematical truth. It can just, it basically is a very good bullshitter. So if, if, <laughs> if there's not enough data, if there's not enough sort of data uh, in, a, in the training data about a particular topic, it's just going to concoct um, accurate sounding narratives, which is a very fascinating problem to try to solve. How do you get uh, language models to infer what is true and not to sort of introspect? Yeah, they need to be taught to say, I don't know, I don't know. more often. Yeah. And... Uh, I know several humans who could be taught that as well. Sure. And, <laughs> and then the other stuff, because you're still uh, a bit involved in the Amazon side with the AI things, the other open question is what kind of products are created from this? Oh, so many. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, just to, you know, we have um, Alexa and Echo, mm -hmm. and Alexa has, you know, hundreds of millions of installed base, you know, inputs. And so there's this, there's, you know, there's Alexa everywhere. And guess what? Alexa is about to get a lot smarter. Yeah. And so that's really, you know, from a product point of view, that's super exciting. There's so many opportunities there. So many opportunities. <laughs> Shopping assistant, yeah. you know, like all that stuff is amazing. In AWS, you know, mm -hmm. we're building Titan, which is our, our foundational model. We're also building um, Bedrock, which our corporate clients at AWS or enterprise clients, they want to be able to use these powerful models with their own corporate data yes. without accidentally contributing their corporate data to that model. Yes. And so those are the tools we're building for them with Bedrock. Yeah. So there's tremendous opportunity here. Yeah, the security, the privacy, all those things are fascinating of how to, because so much value can be gained by training on private data but you want to keep this secure. This is a, it's a fascinating yes, technical this is, problem. This is a very challenging technical problem, and it's one that we're you know making progress on and dedicated to solving for our customers. Uh, do you think there will be a day when humans and robots, maybe Alexa, have a romantic relationship? Like in the movie her? <laughs> well, I mean, I think, think if you look at the- brainstorming products here. If you look at the spectrum of human variety and what people like, you know, sexual variety- Yes. You know, there are people who like everything. So the answer to your question has to be yes. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I how, guess I'm asking. I don't know when. how widespread that will be. All right, <laughs> but it will happen. I was just asking when for a friend, but it's all right. <laughs> I was just moving on. 